Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're addressing the various parables of Jesus which are contained in the Gospels, and this week, the parable of the talents, which is found in the Gospels of Matthew and Luke. It's not short, and the two versions of this story are told pretty differently, so there's a lot to go over here. For even as a man going into a far country called his servants and delivered to them his goods, and to one he gave five talents, and to another two, and to another one, to every one according to his proper ability, and immediately he took his journey. Matthew 25, 14-15 He said, therefore, A certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom, and to return. And calling his ten servants, he gave them ten pounds, and said to them, Trade till I come. Luke 19, 12-13 Luke provides more information about the journey and the servants. The journey is for the purpose of receiving a kingdom, and there are ten servants of this man. The type of money being described is different, but not by too much, since Matthew uses talents and Luke pounds. Luke, however, isn't referring to British pounds, of course, but to a pound of something valuable like money, gold, or silver. Wealth was often measured by weight in those days, and the pound is one way that they would do that. The term refers to both a large amount of money and a unit of weight, and for the same reason. The talent is the same, a unit of weight and a value. Both were large sums of money, with the pound being similar to the amount of money that a normal citizen could make in a year. And the talent, in most cases, was even more valuable, though the weight of the talent wasn't standardized back then, so it's not really possible to be precise about that. These servants are investors who are being asked to make investments for their employer, and in doing so, to make more money from what they've been given. And he that had received the five talents went his way, and traded with the same, and gained other five. And in like manner, he that received the two gained other two. But he that had received the one, going his way, digged into the earth, and hid his Lord's money. Matthew 25, 16-18 Matthew had previously been a tax collector before he chose to follow Jesus, and we can see that tendency in the way he tells us what each servant did with the money while their Lord was away. Luke doesn't include this part, only mentioning what each did with the money after their Lord's return. Matthew explains the process as it happened. However, But his citizens hated him, and they sent an embassage after him, saying, We will not have this man to reign over us. Luke 19.14 This is a portion that Matthew doesn't include at all. These citizens don't seem to be among his servants, so this part almost seems to intrude into the story, which may be why Matthew left it out. We'll come back to these people later on, though. Apparently, they were trying to negotiate with someone to keep this man from becoming their king. An embassage is, of course, an emissary or ambassador of some kind. The parable doesn't say who they were negotiating with, but based on what happens later, we can be pretty sure it wasn't the master of the servants himself. But after a long time, the lord of those servants came and reckoned with them. Matthew 25:19. And it came to pass that he returned, having received the kingdom, and he commanded his servants to be called, to whom he had given the money, that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. Luke 19.15 Matthew explains that a long time passes before the Lord's return, and he wants to know how well they did at investing. In the context of the parable, this Lord is Jesus, returning after a long absence to reward each man according to what he's done. And he that had received the five talents coming brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou didst deliver to me five talents. Behold, I have gained other five, over and above. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant, because thou hast been faithful over a few things, I will place thee over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. And he also that had received the two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliveredst two talents to me. Behold, I have gained other two. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Because thou hast been faithful over a few things, I will place thee over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Matthew 25, 20-23 And the first came, saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained ten pounds. And he said to him, Well done, thou good servant. Because thou hast been faithful in a little, thou shalt have power over ten cities. And the second came, saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained five pounds. And he said to him, 
be thou also over five cities. Luke 19, 16 to 19. Each version of the story has some interesting tidbits to offer here. Luke mentions that the person who had more and accomplished more is given greater responsibilities. In a certain sense, this is a reward which his Lord gives to him in recognition of his merit. However, both are given huge rewards in this same way. In Matthew, we see that their Lord uses the same words to describe his congratulations to both of them. Each worked, making investments until they'd made a profit for their Lord. He acknowledges that they've done well and tells them to enter into his joy, which in this case means the joy that their Lord provides for them. The Lord provides joy for the saints in heaven too, so this is a very close comparison. But he that had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I know that thou art a hard man. Thou reapest where thou hast not sown, and gatherest where thou hast not strewn. And being afraid, I went and hid thy talent in the earth. Behold, here thou hast that which is thine. Matthew twenty five twenty four to twenty five and another came, saying, Lord, behold, here is thy pound which I have kept laid up in a napkin, for I feared thee, because thou art an austere man, thou takest up what thou didst not lay down, and thou reapest that which thou didst not sow. Luke nineteen twenty to twenty one. This man had the job of making investments and ended up doing that job about as well as a large rock could have. Worse, in some ways, since the rock probably wouldn't have badmouthed his lord the way he did, by referring to him as a hard man and criticizing his demands to his face. And his lord, answering, said to him, Wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sow not, and gather where I have not strewed. Thou oughtest therefore to have committed my money to the bankers, and at my coming I should have received my own with usury. Matthew twenty-five, twenty-six 26-27 He said to him, out of thy own mouth I judge thee, thou wicked servant. Thou knewest that I was an austere man, taking up what I laid not down, and reaping that which I did not sow. And when, then, didst thou not give my money into the bank, that at my coming I might have exacted it with usury? Luke nineteen, twenty-two to 23 The practice of usury, loaning money and other property for interest, was against Mosaic law, but unfortunately, that didn't stop it from being fairly common throughout the ancient world, because there's always someone trying to make a buck off of debt. As a side note, I think it's interesting that the Lord is basically suggesting that if this man wasn't up to the job of investing, he should have at least passed the job on to someone who could. Traditionally, this was how banks were meant to make their money, though, as with any investment, there was always a chance it could fail. Take ye away, therefore, the talent from him, and give it to him that hath ten talents. For to every one that hath shall be given and he shall abound. But from him that hath not, that also which he seemeth to have, shall be taken away. And the unprofitable servant cast ye out into the exterior darkness, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Matthew twenty-five twenty-eight to 30 And he said to them that stood by, Take the pound away from him, and give it to him that hath ten pounds. And they said to him, Lord, he hath ten pounds. But I say to you, that to every one that hath shall be given and he shall abound, and from him that hath not, even that which he hath shall be taken from him. Luke 19, 24-26 When a person has what it takes to do a good job and simply chooses not to, there's nobody to blame for their failure but themselves. To leave this person with the money would just be wasteful, since he's proven that he won't make the most of it. This means that when God gives us abilities to use in serving him, and we choose not to use them, we can expect to lose out in the long run. It would be better for a person to try to do the will of God and fail, rather than just hide and not do anything at all. But as for those my enemies, who would not have me reign over them, bring them hither and kill them before me. Luke nineteen twenty seven. Well, remember those people who were trying to get out of being ruled by him? This is what happens. This is why I said they probably weren't trying to negotiate with him directly. If they had been, he could have just said no and sent them packing. It seems more likely that, since he calls them enemies, they were trying to negotiate a deal with one of his foes, to have him stopped, kidnapped, or even killed. That would go a long way towards explaining his harsh reaction against them here. In the end, this is a parable about doing your best to use what God gives you to accomplish his will. You may not have been given the most, and you don't need it. Do the best you can in the situation you're in, and while you probably won't single-handedly make the maximum profit for the Lord that anyone has ever made, there's a good chance you might one day hear the words, Well done, good and faithful servant. Next, 
the workers in the vineyard. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.